Lesson 15. Arduino Advanced Session. Sensors. Contents. The topics covered in this lesson are Living and Robotic Systems Analogy. Sensing the Environment. Choosing a Sensor. Ultrasonic Sensor. Analog to Digital Conversion. How ADC Works. Light Sensor. Photoresistor. The tasks and or activities for this lesson include Using Sensors with Arduino. Living and Robotic Systems Analogy. Living organisms sense their environment through sensory organs, receptors, which send signals to the brain. The brain uses this sensory information to control the musculoskeletal system of the body in response to these senses. For example, when a human touches a hot object and instantly moves the hand away. Similarly, a robot requires sensors, analogous to sensory organs, to gather information about its environment. A microcontroller, analogous to the brain, to process that information and make decisions to control the physical structure of the robot that have actuators like motors, speakers, etc., analogous to the body. For example, an automatic blinds roller could detect that it is morning, using a light sensor, and roll up the blinds in a room, using a motor. Moreover, many bio inspired robots have a physical structure designed to mimic living systems. Particularly, in human robot analogy, the sensory organs, eyes, nose, ear, skin, etc., are analogous to the sensors on a robot, camera, microphone, gas sensor, touch, force sensor, etc. The human arm is analogous to a robotic arm with actuators that has the same number of degrees of freedom as a human arm. The mobility offered by the lower limb of a human is functionally and or structurally analogous to a mobile mechanism of a robot such as a wheeled base, biped structure, etc. The brain sends signals to the musculoskeletal system for movement of the human body based on sensory information. Analogously, a microcontroller uses information from sensors to control the actuators of a robot based on its program. Sensing the environment. The human body has sensory organs that help perceive and respond to external environment. Eyes are the specialized sense organs for sight, ears for hearing, tongue for taste, and nasal passages for smell. The brain computes and processes the data received. And body is the physical structure that responds to process data and manipulate the environment. Similarly, robots have sensors that capture the changes in the environment, sound, force, light, etc and itself, velocity, acceleration, etc., by providing variations in electrical signals, maybe voltage or current changes, that can be processed by a microcontroller to control the actuators to respond to the processed data. Sensors used in everyday life. We all carry some sensors around with us and make use of them to facilitate our daily lives. Accelerometer, fingerprint sensor, temperature sensor, proximity sensors, GPS etc. are some terms common these days. These all are the sensors which may or may not be part of a robot. Why do robots need sensors? Robots need sensors for perception of the surroundings to accomplish tasks involving interaction with the surroundings such as detecting obstacles, following a line, solving a maze, etc. In case of mobile robots, it may be required for the robot to know its location, like in the maze shown, for which sensors like GPS, laser, radar, infrared, litter, light detection and ranging, etc., can be used. One such example is the concept of localization, which is an important component of autonomous vehicles, where the accuracy needs to be in the centimeter range. Localization is a probabilistic approach to estimate the pose of a robot within a known map based on the motion and sensor information of the robot. Since GPS is accurate only up to a few meters, different sensor data can be combined to localize the robot with higher accuracy. Another example is object detection. For a mobile robot to avoid hitting obstacles, sensors could be used to detect the presence of an object in the robot's environment. A relatable example would be an ultrasonic sensor, which will be covered in this lesson. The time measurement from which can be converted to a distance measurement, since we know the speed of sound in air equals 332 meters per second. When mounted on a mobile robot, as the robot moves closer to an object, the distance measured by the sensor reduces, and when the distance is less than the set limit, say 20 centimeters, the microcontroller used to interface the sensor, 
can be programmed to stop the robot when an object is detected within the limit. Self-driving cars use a combination of litter, radar and ultrasonic sensor for mapping the environment in real time to ensure robust functionality and safe operation. These are some advanced concepts involving sensors. Let's see exactly what sensors are and how they work. What are sensors? Sensors collect information from its surroundings and generate an output signal based on that input stimuli. It could be anything such as change in temperature, applied force, change in light brightness, increase or decrease of CO2, etc. They react to those changes and usually convert it into another form of change such as voltage, so that it could be easily understood by human and or machine. The formal definition by American National Standards Institute, ANSI, is as follows. A sensor, or, transducer, is a device which provides a usable output in response to a specific measure and detectable phenomenon. Sensors can detect a wide variety of phenomena such as light, sound, proximity, heat, position, velocity, etc. The various examples of possible stimulus and related quantities that a sensor can measure based on these stimulus are tabulated here. Choosing a sensor. Terminologies These are some basic terminologies helping us in deciding on the what kind of sensor to use for choosing as sensor for a purpose. You might not get best of all worlds at once and you will need to compromise on some aspects to keep it affordable or precise enough and manageable. Accuracy is how close your measurement is to the actual value. Sensitivity is the smallest change in the physical signal that can be detected by the sensor, measuring instrument. Repeatability or precision is the ability of the sensor to output the same value for the same input over several trials and resolution as the smallest increment of a measurement that a device can make. Choosing a sensor. Accuracy versus resolution. Accuracy refers to the closeness of a measured value to a standard or known value. For example, if in lab you obtain a temperature measurement of 17 degrees Celsius of a substance, but the actual or known temperature is 17.5 degrees Celsius, then your measurement is not accurate. In this case, your measurement is not close to the known value and has an error of 0.5 degrees Celsius resolution as the number of parts that the output or reading from a sensor can be broken down into without any instability in the reading. It can be expressed in several ways, the two most common ways being 1. Decimal places If the device used to measure the 17.5 degrees Celsius temperature in earlier example shows a reading of 17.48 degrees Celsius, it would have a resolution of two decimal places or 2 dp, since the reading was 17.48 degrees Celsius. Alternatively, if the device was set to read from 0 degrees Celsius to 100 degrees Celsius, in 1 degree Celsius increments, it would be described as having a resolution of degree C to zero decimal places. 2. Parts, divisions, counts Considering the example of a speed meter of a car, from the image on the right, it can be observed that the, the high-resolution version has a resolution of 1 part in 10 feet or 10 divisions and is more accurate compared to the low-resolution version that has a resolution of 1 part in 5 feet or 5 divisions. This expression describes resolution in absolute terms, rather than engineering units. Choosing a sensor. Accuracy versus precision. Precision refers to the closeness of two or more measurements to each other. Using the previous example, if you check the temperature a given substance 10 times, and get 17.48 degrees Celsius each time, then your measurement is very precise. Precision is independent of accuracy. A measuring device can be very precise but inaccurate or vice versa, accurate but not precise, for example, if on average, your measurements for a given substance are close to the known value, but the measurements are far from each other, then you have accuracy without precision. An analogy for understanding accuracy and precision is to imagine an archer shooting a target. If the archer shoots with accuracy, the arrows will always land close to or at the bullseye. If the archer shoots with precision, the arrow will always land at the same location, which may or may not be close to the bullseye. A good archer will be both accurate and precise by shooting the arrow the same way each time and each time hit the bullseye. Parallax error. Have you ever observed a barrette reading from a different angle and you could see a slightly different measurement value as you move around it? Specifically in the vertical direction? That is, parallax error. It occurs due to the different in the minuscule level and the eye level while looking at the marking. 
Choosing a sensor. Important factors. Based on the requirements and constraints of an application, the choice of sensor varies. Various environmental, economic and sensor-related factors which can help in choosing a sensor are tabulated here such as power consumption, temperature and humidity, cost, sensitivity, response time, etc. Choosing a sensor. Different types. There are often different types of sensors for a similar application. Hall effect sensors are devices which detects the presence of an external magnetic field using the Hall effect and indicates using electrical signals. Optical encoder detects linear or rotary motion that uses light passing through a strip or disc with slits to track the movement of a linear or rotary shafts, and outputs it as a digital signal. Potentiometer can indicate linear or rotary position change, as variable voltage through a resistor by virtue of a sliding contact, wiper, which changes the resistance proportionate to the position. LVDT, RVDT, linear variable differential transducer or rotary variable differential transducer, provide an AC signal with a magnitude that is a function of the displacement of moving core. It can have high accuracy and can also be contactless. All these sensors indicate changes in linear or rotary position as an electrical signal, but based on the range, accuracy, purpose, and cost, the choice of sensor varies. For example, ultrasonic sensors are commonly used for obstacle detection, IR sensors for proximity and line following, potentiometers are used in volume control of audio equipment, laser sensors for surface profiling, imaging, high accuracy displacement measurements, etc. Choosing a sensor. Example. Making a trade-off is important and is specific to an application. The table shown is an example of the various factors, environment conditions, sensitivity, and cost, involved in choosing a sensor. For example, choosing an expensive laser sensor for object detection in a hobby project is not required. An ultrasonic or IR sensor would suffice for such an application. Types of sensors. A passive sensor is a device that detects and responds to some type of input from the physical environment. Passive sensor technologies gather target data through the detection of vibrations, light, radiation, heat or other phenomena occurring in the subject's environment. An active sensor is a sensing device that requires an external source of power to operate. Active sensors contrast with passive sensors, which simply detect and respond to some type of input from the physical environment. Analog sensors. Sensors that produce continuous analog output signal. For digital processing, we usually need to convert such sensor output into digital domain. Examples of analog sensors are potentiometer, temperature sensor, accelerometer, etc. Digital sensors. Sensors that produce discrete valued output signal. Examples of digital sensors digital cameras, digital temperature sensor, push button switch, etc. Ultrasonic distance sensor. The ultrasonic sensor emits short bursts of sound, waits for the waves to be reflected by, echoed, nearby objects, and measures the time of flight of the sound burst. The frequency of the sound is too high for humans, about 40 kHz ultrasonic frequency. Humans can detect sounds in a frequency range of 20 Hz to 20 kHz. The user, microcontroller then computes the distance to an object using this time of flight and the speed of sound in air, 1,126 feet per second or 332 meters per second. The speed of sound is approximately 340 meters, 1,100 feet, per second in air. The ultrasonic sensor uses this information along with the time difference between sending and receiving the sound pulse to determine the distance to an object. It uses the following mathematical equation. A sample calculation for a measured time of 558 microseconds is shown using the distance formula. Distance equals speed multiplied by half the time of flight of the wave. Note that the time taken in halved since the sound burst travels the distance twice. Emitting and receiving. And the total time is measured by the sensor. The ultrasonic sensor has one eye, which is the transmitter, trigger, and the other eye is the receiver, echo. When interfaced with a microcontroller, it can be programmed to provide a high output pulse from the ultrasonic sensor that will terminate when the echo is detected. Hence the width of this pulse corresponds to the distance to the target. Activity 1. Interfacing ultrasonic sensor with Arduino. The ultrasonic sensor has four pins, VCC, 
ground, trig, and echo. Ultrasonic sensor trig and echo pins can be connected to any I.O. pin on the Arduino, while VCC and ground, GND, must be connected to the 5 volts and ground, GND, pins. Pause the video here to do this activity and hit play when you are done. Arduino sketch. Ultrasonic sensor. As it can be seen in the sketch, pin 12 on the Arduino is set as output and connected to, trig, pin of the ultrasonic sensor, is given a 5 microseconds pulse and the sensor emits a 40 kHz sound burst. It acts as a speaker. The sensor waits for the sound wave to be reflected from an object and return to the, echo, pin, which acts as a microphone, and sets pin 11 on the Arduino to low. The, pulse in, function is used to measure the time for which pin 11 is high which is the total time of flight of the sound wave. It is later converted to distance in inches and displayed in the serial monitor, as it can be seen in the program. Activity 1. This demonstration shows the circuit and program of previous slides in practice. As it can be observed, when the object is moved from 2 inches to 4 inches away from the sensor, the value in the serial monitor changes accordingly. Please note that the Arduino needs to be connected to your computer to display data on the serial monitor. Ping ultrasonic distance sensor. The sensor can be chosen based on the requirement, that is, higher range, HCSR04, or one less I.O. port, ping sensor. In case there is only one I.O. pin available on the Arduino, due to a lot of other sensors and actuators interfaced with the microcontroller, the obvious choice is the ping sensor by parallax. On the contrary, if a higher range of detection is the requirement for the application, the HCSR04 is the better choice. There are other factors that come into play such as the voltage and current requirements that are also important and depends on the microcontroller used, its current limit per I.O. pin, etc. Analog to digital conversion, ADC. Microcontrollers can detect binary signals such as whether a button is pressed or not. These are digital signals. When a microcontroller is powered from 5 volts, it understands 0 volts, 0 V, as a binary 0 and a 5 volts, 5 V, as a binary 1. The world however is not so simple and likes to use shades of gray. What if the signal is 2.72 volts? Is that a 0 or a 1? We often need to measure signals that vary. These are called analog signals. A 5 volts analog sensor may output 0.01 volts or 4.99 volts or anything in between. Luckily, nearly all microcontrollers have a device built into them that allows us to convert these voltages into values that we can use in a program to make decisions. Not every pin on a microcontroller can be used to analog to digital conversions. On the Arduino board, these pins have an A in front of their label, A0 through A5 to indicate these pins can read analog voltages. The ADC on the Arduino is a 10-bit ADC meaning it can detect 1024, 2 to the power 10, discrete analog levels. The way an ADC works is fairly complex. There are a few different ways to achieve this, beyond the scope of this lesson. But one of the most common technique uses the analog voltage to charge up an internal capacitor and then measure the time it takes to discharge across an internal resistor. The microcontroller monitors the number of clock cycles that pass before the capacitor is discharged. This number of cycles is the number that is returned once the ADC is complete. Reading analog values. The analog read command is used to read the analog value from the specified analog pin. The pin is passed as an argument. Here, pin A0 reads an integer between 0 and 1023 from pin. The usable pins on the Arduino Uno for this function are A0 to A5. It takes about 100 microseconds for an Arduino to read an analog input. It is worth noting that the maximum rate at which an Arduino can read a value from one analog pin is 10 times per second. Also, if the analog pin is not connected to any sensor, the value returned by the analog read function will vary based on what other analog pins are connected to and any external factors in the vicinity of the Arduino. Writing analog values. The Arduino does not have a built-in digital to analog converter, DAC, but it can pulse width modulate, PWM, a digital signal to achieve some of the functions of an analog output. The function used to output a PWM signal is analog write, pin, value. 
pin is the pin number used for the PWM output and value is a number proportional to the duty cycle of the signal. When value equals 0, the signal is always off. When value equals 255, the signal is always on. On most Arduino boards, the PWM function is available on pins 3, 5, 6, 9, 10, and 11. Converting analog value to digital. Using an ADC, the Arduino can read any voltage value between 0 to 5 volts as a number in the range 0 to 1023. See image on the right. Using the analog read function from an analog sensor. One line of code, shown on the left, can be used to convert it back to the actual voltage. The variable, voltage, is declared as float type to include decimal points, and the analog values read by the sensor, sensor value, is multiplied by a scaling factor, 5.0 by 1023.0, to convert it to the actual voltage measurement. ADC example. Potentiometer This is an ADC example in which a potentiometer is used as an analog sensor that changes its resistance and therefore the voltage across its terminals, which can be read by the Arduino. The exact line of code from the previous slide is used here to demonstrate how it works. It can be observed that as the potentiometer knob is turned counterclockwise, the voltage reading displayed changes accordingly, as learned in the previous slides. ADC example. LED brightness control. To take a step further, in this example, the change in reading from the potentiometer is used to control the brightness of an LED. There is just one extra line of code here that uses analog write function to output a PWM signal proportionate to the sensor reading, which controls the voltage supplied to the LED and hence, its brightness. Another way of scaling the value from one range to another is using the map function which maps one range of values to another. The map function has four parameters. The value to be remapped, lower limit 1, higher limit 1, lower limit 2 and higher limit 2. It remaps a number from one range, lower limit 1 to higher limit 1 to another range, lower limit 2 to higher limit 2. For example, if y equals map, 200, 0, 1023, 0, 255, then 200 in the range 0 to 1023 will be remapped and assigned to the variable y. The value will be 49 in the new range 0 to 255. Therefore, y equals 49. Please note that the map function uses integer math. Hence, even if float type variables are used, the decimal portion will remain 0. In the earlier example, y will be 49.00 instead of 49 integer. Therefore, if resolution is required, manually type the conversion as y equals value by 1023.0 times 255.0. It can be observed that as the potentiometer knob is turned clockwise, the brightness of the LED reduces proportionately, as expected. Light sensor, photoresistor. Photoresistors are analog devices that produce an analog change in the resistance value based on the amount of light received. As it can be seen in the plot, the darker the environment of the sensor gets, higher is its resistance and vice versa. On the right is a pin diagram for interfacing the photoresistor with an Arduino. Interfacing LDR with Arduino. For activities that follow, first this LDR circuit should be built. Use the schematic shown as a reference to build a basic LDR circuit for reading the sensor value. Activity 2. Use LDR to turn a LED on or off. If the light increases, LED switches off and if there is less light then LED switches on. Make relevant circuit diagram for LDR connection. Use ADC of Arduino to accomplish the task. Switch LED on and LED off. Once completed, rather than switching the LED on, off, change the brightness of the LED depending upon the light intensity level at LDR. Hint. Recall the concept of reading analog values from a sensor and mapping it to write proportionate values to an LED. It may be easier to first turn the LED on, off, before trying to control its brightness. Pause the video to do this activity and hit play when you are done. Here is the circuit required for controlling an LED using an photoresistor. A common mistake is forgetting about the common ground. Keep that in mind if and when debugging is required. This is a solution for turning an LED on, 
off using a photoresistor. Play the video and compare try to follow the code for better clarity of the concept and the code. This is a solution for brightness control and LED using a photoresistor. Please note that the circuit remains the same as before. Play the video and try to correlate the code with what is happening in the demo, for better clarity of the concept and the code. Sensor applications. Camera-based sensors can be used for crop line detection for autonomous navigation of harvesting tractors, machines. Unmanned aerial vehicle, UAV, drones, are also popular for crop row detection, monitoring of fields, collecting samples, etc. Automated guided vehicles, AGVs, use the concept of following a line or tags on the floor in industries for material handling. Another application of sensors in a warehouse setting is autonomous operation of a forklift. Dedicated camera systems are installed on the forklift to identify the pallet slots. Orient itself to align the forks with the slots and pick up a loaded pallet from the floor. Artificial intelligence is used for quality control and sorting in manufacturing. It can also be used to check for defects that help predict maintenance requirements of production machinery. Face detection is the process of detecting and locating human faces in images and face tracking is the process of tracking the face in a video frame. Advanced facial recognition systems use a combination of cameras and 2D, 3D sensors, to create a digital data, map of a face, which can be used to verify an individual's identity by comparing the facial features, contours to those in the database, stored during setup. Another example of biometric data is fingerprint scanner. These are common features available on most smartphones today. The activities covered in this lesson include reading sensors with Arduino. Particularly, interfacing photoresistor, light sensor, to control a LED and using ultrasonic sensors, for distance calculation. Thank you.